Hello all, welcome back to the channel and a new video. Today we are starting a new project, so let's take a look at what we've been working on and what we're planning to get up to. So, what are we building? If you haven't guessed already from the thumbnail, we are sticking a 140cc pit bike engine into a shop rider mobility scooter. This is very much a Colin Firth inspired project, but we thought we'd give it a go and build it of our own interpretation with our own design and show you guys how easy it is, how much fun it is, and how much this thing is gonna rip when it's done. Now, before we get into the actual building and the fun part, um, a quick point, this is a stupid project. It's very dangerous, and if you're gonna do it, do it at your own risk. We know that when this thing's done, someone could hurt themselves and we're doing so, as I say, at our own risks and do it at your own risk as well. It says it's 14 horsepower, mate. It's not 14 horsepower. <laughs> I know that's what it says. So guys, we're back with a new project. As you can see from this title and this intro, we're sticking a 140cc pit bike engine into a shop rider. Is it a good idea? Probably not. Will it be fun? Yes. So the heart of this beast is a 140cc eBay special, about £350, gets you a kickstart engine, completely brand new, full of oil, ready to go with all the running gear. So that is the heart of it, and that's what's going to be powering this beast that we're pulling out of the car here. So second hand shop rider, completely knackered, it was ready for the scrapyard, so essentially we are giving it a new home and a second lease of life. So to start this project, we're just getting the shop rider in the workshop, stripping it down, pulling the batteries off it and having a look with what we've actually got to work with. Um, you get these two massive batteries and obviously this whole thing is going to be gutted to fit and make room for our engine. So a bit of stripping down, a bit of tear down and then we'll really focus in the design, how we're going to fit this engine and just how we're going to make this thing work. So, as mentioned, the first part of this project is kind of stripping it down and working out how the hell you cram this engine in there. I know people have done it before, but we've gone for a slightly bigger engine, so more to fit in, and it's only a small shop rider, so lots to think about. But we continue ripping this thing apart, there's not a lot that holds them together. A few rusted bolts, no doubt, as it's been sitting outside for a long time, but you can see, not much to it, and we can wow. pull it apart pretty quickly. With all the plastics off and the seat, you really see the bare carcass and we can start thinking about how we're going to position our engine, what sort of frame type we're going to use and how we're going to set that up. So first things first, get that angle grinder and cut this thing in half. The whole rear end needs to be redone, that's what a lot of other people do and we thought let's start with a sort of blank piece of paper, cut it up and then lay out where we want stuff to go. So. With that rear end cut off, it gives you a bit of flexibility. You can pull the engine over, get it on the welding table and start messing around and taking some measurements and kind of working out where you want your engine to sit. So with the engine on the table propped up approximately where we think, you can start to look at your axle line, where your body's going to sit on your wheels and try to think how you can put this together. The main thing here was making sure we left enough space for a sprocket chain brake, axle and accessibility to get to everything. So we set that where we thought and made some small adjustments. You can see we're starting by wood blocks and just prep, propping this up to get it where we think will be best. With a few measurements taken and the engine approximately in place, we continue to rip down the shop rider and get everything off it so we've got full access. At this point now, there's nothing to do but get straight into it. We're happy with the engine position, we think that it's going to work, and we've just got to build a frame around it. So, at this point, I'm going to let some footage roll, and we're going to get straight into this build.
So, what we did there was get our first part of the chassis made up. We added two pieces of 30mm box section to the front, and these give us some really good reference starting fixing points. Everything can come off this and work backwards, and we can ensure that what we do here is square, and then the rear axle engine will all be square to this. With these over length chassis rails attacked in place, it's now a case of throwing back on the plastics and working out where our axle line is going to sit. We have a rough idea of the engine, we've got some chassis rails and now we want to mark this rear axle. Um, this is dead important because as I said at the start, you need to make sure there's enough room between your axle, engine, chain, sprockets, the whole drive line really. So having this set up really allows us to mock it up. Um, the axle is about 17mm bar on two bearing car carriers. Uh, once again, all this stuff was bought of eBay, so nice and cheap but solid and will last long enough for how long we intend to ride this thing. With a rough set axle position, I say rough, we want this to be accurate, we clamp it all in place and start measuring front to rear, corner to corner, just making sure that our axle is parallel, parallel with the front wheels. As much as this thing is going to be sketchy, we would kind of like it to go in a straight line, so spending the time now to make sure it's square is really important. We add a rear brace across the back and that just will stop any distortion as we mess around with this thing. With the axle in position, the engine goes back in and we start thinking about how we're going to fix this axle in place. There's a few ideas, so let's roll the footage and go into how we make these fixing brackets, bolts, clamps to hold this axle in place. Now that we have essentially a rolling chassis, we can move over to the engine mounting side and look at how we're going to fix this into the frame. So we draw up some brackets and head over to the plasma cutter and get these ripped out. Essentially it's going to consist of a base plate, which is what we're cutting here. So four holes just on a rectangle piece which will bolt to the bottom and then we'll have a brace across the frame and then two lugs that come up the side and it essentially act as a cradle. Um, bear in mind this is one of multiple mounts so this will support the underside and then we'll have mounts on the top as well to keep this engine nice and solid. So a little bit of grinding was needed just to touch this bracket up where we mounted it really flush and close to the bottom of the crankcase. There's an edge that needs a bevel so we quickly knock a bevel onto that and get that fitted back up to the engine and we're really happy with that and that's a nice solid point to start mounting off. The other bits are on the CNC table now, so they're getting cut out. This is essentially the long brace that I was talking about. So we rip that out of some three mil steel, pull pull that off, clean it up as usual with the wire wheel, and that's ready to go onto the chassis. Oh yeah, we'll have come off some tabs. Yeah. We need to sniff the ground. It literally does need to sniff. Yeah, but not too much because no one's been paying the arse. As you can hear by the chat, there is a constant back and forward and checking and all of this to make sure that what we do works. Right there we're talking about the height of the engine saying that we want it nice and low to fit everything around it but we don't want it to be an issue where we're grounding out and stuff and making it difficult to ride but we agree on the height and we tack up this bracket everything's only tacked at this point just in case we need to make changes which are very likely especially in this case where you're designing it as you go but 
cradle gets bolted on with those four bolts and we can go to position it onto those rails and you can see it just slots down and acts as like a slider so the beauty of this is that we can slide the engine back and forward to find that optimum position with the ability to now move the engine into its desired position we put some more attention on the rear axle we get that fixed into a position and start putting the sprocket on you can see we've got the rear brake disc on there loosely and we're going to start finalizing all these positions so we can do the further things such as chains brake mounts and kind of get everything fixed down as you've noticed our rear axle started out as a long piece of steel bar so at this point we were happy to cut it down and get it to a better length it will still be slightly oversized as we need to machine some keyways but it will be a great idea of what it will be like and it just reduces the size of it and with that there in place we can start to weld collets onto the sprocket we use the shaft as a way to centre it and we can start getting these things set up so we can work on the chain with that sprocket now fixed to a collet which lines on the shaft we're in a perfect position to work on the chain so we got a really cheap chain here I think it was £12 and this will be the part of the drivetrain for this machine so we just split that up and start looking at chain lengths obviously we've got some adjustment in our rear axle you can see we've got those sliders so we can get chain tension there but essentially the chain is super short and it's a weird setup because it's almost a one-to-one -one sprocket. Getting the chain finished up is almost the icing on the cake for axle and engine positioning because that locks it all down and confirms that it works. With that out of the way, we're now going to move over to bodywork and get that all fitted up so we're ready to work on the structural side underneath it. Yeah, we can do that. Should we cut this now? With this rear axle in place, we take a second to look at the brakes up. You can see our disc there, it's tiny, and we've mounted it on a machined steel boss with three screws that hold it in place. Um, we're just taking the time now to look at where we're going to position this and how in theory we, we could mount the caliper. The reason we're doing this now is just so we don't shoot ourselves in the foot and put a bracket here or some framework here and then we can't mount the caliper so thinking ahead should hopefully help us out and give us some good packaging on the rear of this thing next on our list of things to do is start working on this rear frame so obviously a seat's going to sit above this engine you've got air filters a carburetor so we're starting to think about how the framework is going to what's it going to look like so we start by adding in a cross brace right across just behind the rear axle. This offers some stiffness on the rear axle line and also gives us a nice point to build the frame off of and come off up from that. And this is what it looks like as of now. You can see we've got the box section going across. That's some 20 by 20 box. And then you can see our sprocket, our sliders and our whole sort of setup as it sits now. Next up on the list, we start work on this rear frame. I spoke about it a lot and all the importance of setting the axle and the engine and I feel like once you get that done the project becomes a lot more sort of build as you go and there's less pressure because all the key things are fixed in place but we kind of had a good think about what would work best here and decided that we'd build a cradle over the rear of the engine that would bolt in and out or would have a bolt in and out section. The main reason for this was to get access and be able to pull the engine out if needed without really stripping this thing down. 
here you can see the concept come to life we've got that triangulation over the rear axle and that sits inside it and then those two top points between that will link some steel bar but a lot of back and forward trying to make sure we had all the clearance we needed but this design worked well and packaged as well and is lightweight and quite functional so we were happy with this and we continued down this direction with a lot of laughing and joking about what we could do what we couldn't do we did a quick clearance check and we're happy so we thought let's get these drilled and positioned and a bit more fixed in place so you can see there that's the one side and then Fred goes over to the pillar drill and starts drilling out these next parts uh, we're sticking holes in the bottom for chain adjusters as the bolts sit inside this and there will also be a hole in the top to hold our support brace the tap and die comes out or should I say the tap comes out and we tap these holes to an M8 thread um, trying to keep all the bolts consistent across this just so it's nice and easy when we do all of the final bolts for it but with thread tapping those and getting them sorted I weld up and get these fully together so I buzz up these joints and then grind these back so they're all nice and smooth eventually we'll, we will paint this but for now just need to keep it all smooth Unfortunately, we are coming towards the end of part one of this project. I hope everyone has enjoyed it so far. I hope that is something exciting and cool and something that you think you could do yourself. So if you are enjoying this video and you want to see more of these series, please do drop a like or even better, please subscribe to the channel. There's plenty of videos coming out on a multitude of different things and hopefully they are interesting and fun for everyone to watch. So before we wrap up the video, here is a quick overview of where we're at. We've got the rear braces tacked in place. You can see our temporary bolt adjusters for the rear axle and our fixing points at the top. Fred's just finishing out the other side and that's where we're leaving part one. So once again, I hope everyone's enjoyed it. Please do drop a like and hopefully I'll see you soon for part two. Take it easy.